Morning everybody and welcome to the safari tent. Um, I must be honest, I'm quite excited to be in here. I feel like a little bit of a kid in a laboratory at this stage. Um, so many little things that James and the team have collected over the last few months and I'm quite excited to have a little look around and scratch around and see what we're able to find. Um, when we were, kind of came in this morning, James managed to find a piece of bark that had a little egg casing on it. So we've shoved the egg case under the microscope, as you can see here, and you can see the amazing detail that this little egg casing has got. Um, the, uh, as you can see, there's a little piece of bark and there on top is an egg casing. Now we're not 100% sure of what is actually in this egg case. So I think maybe what we should do is over the next few weeks is just keep it with us and see how it goes. And maybe we'll even get something hatching out of it. So there's a few cracks and tears in it at this stage, which maybe has affected whatever's inside there. And it's possible that it might not um, hatch. But my initial guess would be probably something along the spider family. They tend to build these very sort of cottony type webs um, over their egg cases. And so I'd imagine it's one of those, but it could also be a beetle um, or, or any of those kind of species. But isn't it incredible the detail? You can actually see each little fiber that's been um, been sewn onto that little bark um, and, and created this egg case. It's quite incredible to see. So we'll definitely monitor that for the next little bit and see how we go with that. And like I say, I am actually very, very, very excited to be in the tent. Like I say, it's a, it's a bit of a daunting task I, at first. I was a bit nervous up front here, but um, just looking around and seeing what we have is, is there's so many things that we can focus on and have a look at. And I'm really, really looking forward to kind of getting stuck in and seeing what there is around the tent here. Um, we do have some nyalas that have been drifting around. So there's some animal life as well, but we'll be looking at mostly little plants and insects and trying to use the microscope to get in nice and close on all the things that we don't generally see when we're out on the drives and even the bushwalks to some degree. Um, so while I was walking around, I've also managed to find a tree that has quite a few interesting little growths on it. So as you can see here, we have a silver cluster leaf, all right? And on the silver cluster leaf, there were two different formations that have formed on the tree itself. Now, the first is this little one here, which is a big ball that is grown on the end of the, the stem. And this is called a gall. Now this little gall um, has been made by a wasp. All right, the wasp will have come and stung this plant and the plant will then swell as, as a response to that stinging, much like somebody when they get injured and they get hurt, they will then be able to kind of swell up and the body is, that's the body's way of basically protecting it. And it's the same thing with this plant. So as it swells over, there's a growth hormone that gets sent there and it basically protects that branch from being hurt any further, um, which is ideal for the wasp because what the wasp is trying to do is it's trying to lay its larvae inside um, this little swollen area so that the larvae has enough food to sustain itself until it pupates and hatches as an adult wasp. Um, now, it's an incredibly clever strategy that they have because if you have a look at this branch, um, it's very difficult to show you, but it is very, 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 very firm. Um, it is hard, 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 as you can imagine a tree would be. And so very few predators are going to be able to have the power to actually break through this um, and get to that little wasp. And so once the wasp is kind of pupated, you'll see that it has eaten its way out through the bottom of the little hole here, and it will then come out here, wait for the wings to dry, and off it goes, and therefore quite safe in its little home, which is pretty incredible. Now, what we're going to do just now is we're going to try and break this open um, to show you a little bit of the inside and to show you how the wasp has actually hollowed it out. It's quite a difficult thing to break, so I don't know quite how we're going to do it just yet, but we'll make a plan somehow um, and get to that a little bit later. 